Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get into some uh, advice into college tours. So my guests today are Jeff Starr. He is the president of A1 Limousine and the CEO of Triangle Tours, as well as uh, Taylor Pacelli. She is the uh, tour planner for Triangle Tours, and welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having us. So uh, usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? Uh, Temple University. And you? And I graduated from Ohio University. Ohio University. So, Taylor, um, let's just go back into high school. Um, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year of high school, senior year? When did it all begin for Honestly, you? Honestly, probably middle school. Ah. <laughs> I wanted to get out. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but definitely the planning started probably my freshman year of college. That's when everything counts. That's when everyone's telling you everything counts. Every move you make is going to reflect on where you go to college or what you want to do and this is where you're going to learn what you want to do to be able to choose where you want to go to college so literally everything is about college and high school um, so you definitely had to work with the guidance departments you were always having meetings with your guidance counselor about where you're at what your goals are um, and how we're going to get there pretty much so um, how did you end up picking the school that you chose um, when I first wanted to go to college, I wanted to do journalism, I wanted to do broadcast journalism, so I was looking at schools that were really good with that. Not even like looking at like requirements to get in or anything, but like I went to the bookstores and bought like all those college planning books like with all the lists of schools and what they're good for, and then I went online and like typed in like all the different things I wanted out of a school. So whether I wanted Greek life or I wanted to um, be in a cold versus hot area. Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, I wanted hot and I end up in a cold area, so <laughs> things change. But, um, and then the type of school, city, suburban, you know, there's so many different things that go into picking sure. a college. So um, I knew I didn't want to be too close to home, but I didn't want to be too far. So I put in all those little things and it shoots up all these different types of um, possible colleges that, make, that match you. Yeah. Um, and so then I looked into it and just went and applied and visited schools and um, when I visited schools, like visiting the schools is really when I felt at home right. um, and was able to be like, this is the place for me. This is where I fit in most. So um, when you were at Temple University, uh, did, uh, what was the atmosphere there when you w were going? Very different than it is today. I mean, it's a, it's a city school. And when I went there, it was, it was uh, not as uh, much of a campus feel as it is today. Yeah. Uh, back then, you were you were immersed in the city. So, yeah. So now, um, you you go from college, you get into uh, limousine. Was it a family business? How did how did it all start? Family for you? business. My father started the company in 1964, and I actually was working with him uh, since I was a kid. Uh, officially, uh, since 1985, they they call it volunteering. Before that, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, until present day. Until present day. Right. And, and Taylor, how did you get involved in... in uh... Coming around here? Well, I've known Jeff for a long time, and so um, he asked me to come on board. I have some free time right now because I graduated a semester early recently, and so I'm helping out here now, and I'm really enjoying it. He keeps me busy. <laughs> Great. So let's get into uh, A1 Limousine and then, of course, Triangle Tours. Um, what is A1 Limousine about? How does it work? How can people find you? So A1 Limousine is a, a full service transportation company. We have everything from sedans all the way up through motor coaches. Um, we handle transportation. Our, our corporate office is here in Princeton. But we handle transportation throughout the United States and the globe. Um, we have our own network of vendors that we've been building for the last uh, seven years. And we can handle transportation anywhere. Wow. And all over the globe. Yes. So how did so someone can take your your transportation from here in let's say Europe, Asia, wherever? Anywhere. And what we've done is we've partnered with uh, other companies throughout the the globe and by doing that um, we check their quality, we make sure they're licensed for the area they're operating in, that they have the proper insurances for the area they're operating in. And then uh, when you book through us, your credit information stays in the United States, so it's more secure and you don't have to worry about uh, your credit card being handed out throughout the, the world. Wow. 
So um, how, does, uh, how does someone find you at A1 Limousine? Well, you can either find us on the web at www.a1limo.com or 888-LIMO-888. Uh, gotcha. And now uh, Triangle Tours. So um, what is Triangle Tours and what do they do to help people with college tours? Well, Triangle Tours is um, a full-service tour company. We handle everything from uh, college tours, uh, student excursions, all the way up through um, uh, senior citizen trips. So there's there's something for everyone wow. in terms of the types of trips we offer. But specifically with our college tours, and one of the things that Taylor focuses on is setting up our college visit program so that um, students can get a, that flavor, that feel whether they're at home at a college, see them in person, meet people, and um, get a, a, a good view of, um, of the school more than you get just off of a website. Now, do the high school students uh, go to trianglotours.com? Do they go to their high school? How, how do they find you? So right now we're in the works of, um, we want to, go, we're going to the high schools to promote this to their students. So they'll be able to go, um, the high schools will be promoting this to the students and then they'd go through us to um, go on the trip. Gotcha, now what are the packages gonna entail? What, what, are, what are the kids gonna be looking at when they come to the Yeah, website? absolutely, so right now we're in the midst of um, creating six different tours to run just this summer. Um, Three right now we have pretty much planned out. The other ones are still being confirmed um, and in the works of planning just little logistics here and there. Um, so right, first off we're going to a Boston, uh, Boston tour. So we're going to see universities such as Tufts University, Bentley, Brandeis, Northeastern, Emerson College, University of Massachusetts, Boston, and Boston University. Wow. Um, and not only are they gonna be able to go and see um, like two colleges in a day, it's about like a four day, five day trip. Oh. Um, but they also will be able to do activities in the area whether and see Boston for itself because when you go to a school, you wanna see the area surrounding it. It's not sure. just the school, you wanna feel like you can do something else than just school, you know, and have those, um, just have a home outside of school. Yeah, sure. So um, we're gonna be taking them hopefully boating and um, bowling as well, aquarium, just to get to see the city, just some free time down there. Um, we'll, we'll also be doing a mid-Atlantic tour. Um, so for people that don't wanna go maybe to Boston, but wanna be not too far, like I didn't wanna be too far, but not too close. Sure. Um, we're gonna go see University of Delaware, University of Maryland, George Mason University, George Washington University, uh, UVA, James Madison, Duquesne, uh, Pittsburgh, and Gettysburg and Franklin and Marshall College. So mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of schools there and then we'll take them to the National Mall. Um, again, bowling, always fun time. And then um, we're planning to do a ghost tour with them. So little fun things that maybe you haven't done before. Yeah. Um, and then we're also like planning for the students to be able to eat in the dining hall. I think it's pretty important that you get to try the food that you're gonna be eating for four years um, because it makes a difference, let sure. me tell you. So you definitely wanna try that out. Um, and then and the other tour that right now is set in stone is our New England tour. Um, we're gonna be seeing Quinnipiac University, Williams College, Norwich, University of Vermont, University of Massachusetts Amherst, um, University of New Hampshire, University of Maine, Bowden, Rhode Island, and uh, University of Connecticut, so UConn. Um, so you're going through a lot of different states, getting a lot out of that tour. Sure. Again, um, they'll see beautiful water features because it's a beautiful New England's just beautiful. Um, they'll eat at uh, restaurants, um, one of which is actually um, featured on TV on diners, drive-ins, and uh, dives. And then um, again, free time in the city and just exploring the New England area. So now, if you're a student in high school. Uh, could you be a freshman, a sophomore, a junior? Do you only take uh, sophomores and juniors? Do, can you be a senior? How, how, does it, how does it work? The program for the summer is targeting um, juniors primarily, you know, uh, but the summer program would also work for rising seniors. Um, we're also gonna have a program in the fall and again in the spring, and those would be, again, primarily juniors, 
but uh, seniors and um, uh, freshmen, or excuse sophomores. me, sophomores are able to participate in the tour. Okay, Definitely. so so it, it could be anybody, but right, it really depends on the time of year based on where they are in school. Because at a certain point, the seniors will have already applied to all the colleges that they want to go to or already accepted. So at that point, um, right. not as many seniors would go, but more of rising rising seniors who are then juniors would right. go. So okay, so it's a, the summertime makes sense for both rising seniors and juniors. The fall would be uh, mostly juniors and some seniors. The spring would be mostly juniors and some sophomores. So it's gonna be an all year round type of tour. Did the right. tours start in the summer of this year? Correct. Right, and this the ones July. we're describing are the summer tours. We're able to do a little bit longer tour so you get more colleges uh, per tour. And, mm -hmm. and then in the fall and the spring, it will be more of a shorter tour, like three days maybe? Uh, three days. The fall tour will be shorter. The spring tours will also probably be four or five days. Oh. Right, depending on the length of time students are out of school um, or just the circumstance of what's going on. And, the, and they'll always have eight schools, 10 schools as part of the tours? That's the plan as long as we can coordinate it. Um, for those smaller weekends, it might not be as many. It might be like four or five schools, um, but a good amount. So now, how about if uh, I'm a parent and I work all the time, can I send my son or my daughter on this tour by themselves? Yes, um, we're planning on a uh, ratio of uh, 1 to 15 for um, chaperones, so that there will be a chaperone for each group of students, and then also a tour guide on the bus. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then if, if one parent or, or both parents want to go, is that, is that also uh, part of the tour? Can they go? They can. Okay, yeah. so, so what happens if two parents go on a tour? Do they do... They do do you do something where they have separate rooms? Do they, can they hang out with their friends that go on the tour? Well, one of the things we do to contain the cost for the students is they're able to book quads uh, for rooms. Obviously, if the parents are going, they're not gonna wanna do that. So the room cost might be a little bit higher, but they're also not paying for the chaperone that way. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's, that's really well, really right. good to do. Um, how about uh, high schools? How are the high schools going to find out about you? How are the guidance counselors going to find out about you? Are you going to go to uh, college nights? Or are you going to do things at the high school? How, how is it going to work? We're actually going to take um, brochures to the guidance departments of um, the high schools throughout central New Jersey so that this way they have um, information about the tours and they can share it with the students. And um, moving forward, uh, as they have their college nights, we'll, we'll start participating in those. And now, can the whole country get involved as well? Let's say, you know, I have a cousin that lives in California, and they want to do tours. Can I get them to come to these tours? Absolutely. You can. Mm -hmm. So how does, that, how does that work? They just have to fly themselves here to New Jersey? They have to fly into New Jersey, and then um, they can join the tour and, and be part of it. Now, how is it going to work? Give me, uh, give me a sense. Um, let's say a high school, let's say it's Princeton High School, we're in Princeton, New Jersey. Let's say it's Princeton High School. Uh, it's July when you're having these tours. Does the parent uh, drive to the high school? Do they drop off their car? How, how, how is it all gonna work? Uh, are you gonna pick me up in my house? Now we're gonna work with the high schools to create a central pickup point. So um, depending on how many high schools are clustered together, um, we'll select one of the schools as a central drop point. The parents can drop the kids off there, they get on the tour bus and, and leave from there. And then they'll come back five days later, whatever. Same place. Same place. Yep. Same place. Okay, and how about, um, how about when, they, when they do these tours? Uh, so they'll do two schools every day. Mm -hmm. um, what happens in the evening? Uh, or, you know, these so kids... that's when these activities would come in hand, when they get to explore the city, when they get to go boating or bowling or go to the aquarium. They'll have um, all that free time in the evenings and um, as well as dinners, um, organized dinners. And, and is yeah. it every day? How, how is it gonna work? Are you gonna have an activity each and every day? Not every day. Um, some of the days we'll be driving, but um, normally we try and plan it out where they'll have an activity or a dinner, if not one or the other or both. Gotcha. Now, if, uh, if a student wants to go on every single one of these tours that you have, is that going to be feasible for these kids to do, or are you going to have tours going on each week for all three locations? During the summer, um, if somebody wanted to take all six tours, they could. 
they're not they're going to run sequentially as opposed to at the same time um, the fall tours uh, they would have to select one because they're going to be run during uh, njea weekend since the kids are off for school anyway uh, so there'd only be time for one tour there and then in the uh, springtime we're going to be using the spring breaks so um, if they go during their spring break it would be time for one tour um, however, if they do take time off and want to go on one of the other tours, they could. Okay, so now the big thing with parents, it's got to be cost effective, right? So is there a range that, are, that you have already for these or you're still working on pricing? How, how's it working? The pricing will be finalized uh, shortly, but the, uh, we're trying to keep the costs as low as possible so that the students can afford to go on the trip and it makes sense. Um, you know, there's a lot of expenses when you go to travel to schools um, between hotels, uh, cars or airfare, uh, fuel, tolls, etc. Um, so what we're trying to do is organize it so that everything is planned in advance um, and that's how you're able to get two schools a day. Um, when you're doing it on your own, it makes it a lot more difficult to do that because of the uh, coordination involved. But we're doing all that in advance so that the we get as much packed into a short amount of time so that effectively if the students on our tour it should be uh, as cost effective as going on their own. Okay so um, now you have a lot of students that that have a lot of friends right so can all their friends go uh, how about if it's only 10 people going on a tour do, do, do you not take the tour do, do you have to wait until there's a certain amount of people well, in order for it to be cost effective, there has to be a minimum number on the bus. But uh, in general, we're looking at, um, you know, to start this 20 different high schools, which accounts for about 43 to 4,700 students hmm. just in the junior class. So when you're, you know, if you have uh, the senior class and junior class, it's about 9,000 people looking to, or that have potential to go on the tour. And um, with the first group, it'll be, um, 50 people per tour, six tours with 300 students. Um, so the sooner you, you book the tour, the, the better, more likely you are to be able to get a seat. So if there's more parents than students, you'll still be able to take the tour? Correct. And, yeah. and vice versa, if there's more students than yeah. parents? It's the, it's the number of students that the schools are looking at. Okay. So it's uh, 50 students is, is the uh, limitation. Wow. So uh, each tour can, can go up to about 50, 50 students. Correct. Um, so the next question then would be uh, students that, that have their friends coming and so on, is there any way of uh, working out uh, rooms together? Do the parents have to, does the parent have to be in the room with them? Can they do it with their friends? Because that's, that's a big thing at the high school level is, hey, I want to be with you know, my buddies. Yeah, that's not a problem. When they set up their room requests, they just have to name the other people they want to stay with. Now, uh, how about sports or... Uh, religious schools, things of that sort. Do you do anything like that? Yeah, so we're mm -hmm. actually planning to do a Catholic colleges tour in the coming, um, hopefully in the summer as well. Um, so we're in touch with the Catholic University of America, Fordham University, Georgetown University, Loyola, Loyola, excuse Loyola. Me, Loyola University of Maryland, Miss Aracordia University, St. Francis, Seton Hall, the University of Scranton, and Wheeling University. So. Um, we're hoping to get that all planned out and uh, be able to put that in our summer tours as well. And that's just the start of um, schools that would be like for a specific group of people. Um, sports tours could definitely be arranged as well in the future. Um, so yeah. if I'm a football player or a basketball player mm -hmm. and I want to do basketball schools, you can have a whole tour of basketball mm -hmm. people going to particular basketball schools. Yeah, we schools. can definitely get in touch with their athletic departments and do mm -hmm. that for them. So so now, uh, so a big thing then is to be partners with these guidance counselors at the high schools. Uh, they're, they're basically your marketing tool uh, for this. So if they, they, if a high school has a particular thing that they want to do, can they create their own tour with you? Can they call you up and say, I have... 25 kids that want want to do football tours do they create the schools and and help you help you create something if there's a if they're looking for something that we haven't already put together we're always willing to work with a group to uh, create something customized for them that's never a problem um, one of the things that the um, 
you know, I wanted to mention and, and what drove a lot of the creation of these tours is uh, sitting in the high schools. Um, I have a daughter that's getting ready to go to college as well. And uh, the guidance counselors stressed college visits. So there's a lot of things that, that go into choosing a school and the school also choosing you. And when all things are considered, one of the things that the guidance counselor had said to us is that um, visiting the school will give you that edge over somebody that didn't. So if all things are considered equal and they have to make a choice between two people, they'll look at the person that visited the school as somebody who put the effort and time to come and shows that extra part of, uh, that extra interest that um, the other person didn't do. So since there's so many factors that go into choosing a college and so many factors that a college uses to choose its students, the more things that you can do that, that make that connection, the better. Yeah, so, and, and now once they're at the school, uh, do you have any involvement once they're at the, at the universities or the universities are taking it from there and they're doing the tour, their own tour and so on? Well, the universities conduct their own tour and all the schools that we've uh, contracted with, we're looking for both a tour of the campus as well as an information session for the school. Gotcha. So, so that gives the parents an understanding of what the school is all about, tuition costs and so on. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. So um, uh, now these parents that are contacting, they, they can go through their high school because you'll have the information at the high school. They, can they contact you directly? Can they contact you, Taylor, let's say? Absolutely. Directly. Absolutely. And then um, we would set up, the, we would put them on the, the, the whole list. process. Yeah, exactly. They don't, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely so Definitely contact us directly. So now um, the next question then is, if I have a hundred people from two two particular schools and they're all going to the Boston um, tour, okay, we'd are we to, doing two buses? Is that what's we'd happening? We'd actually have to divide it into two tours. So the first fifty people are going to be on the published tour, and if we have a wait list of additional people, once there's enough people to go on the tour, um, we would then um, book a second tour because again the colleges won't allow more than 50 students on the same group tour. So it might be a different day, a different time, a different week? Exactly. Right, it could, it could completely Okay, change. so you can't bombard the school with 100 kids all at the same they time. They don't right. have enough um, now with our, staff to necessarily provide it. Correct. Yeah. Now like our Boston tour is an example, we might be able to rearrange the order of the schools and use the same week, but a lot of the other schools, because it's a route that the bus has to follow, uh, um, we would have to choose another week. So it all becomes logistics then? Mm -hmm. Yes. Gotcha. But and we're hoping to do it again and again and again, so it's not like we go to the school once and you wouldn't be able to go to that yeah. school ever again. Correct. Now, um, the buses, what are the buses like? The buses are um, MCI uh, motor coaches that are uh, equipped with um, a Bathroom. lav, a lav uh, video monitors, uh, power. So. And uh, Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. can you get all, uh, you know, today, you got to keep everybody <laughs> occupied. Wi-Fi and power. Because <laughs> they're not going to be singing, uh, you know, a thousand bottles of beer on the wall <laughs> type of songs on and, the bus. One of the other advantages, too, since um, the, par the, the tour is designed so the students can go on the tour by themselves, if a parent chooses not to go, uh, the chaperone will also be taking notes in the uh, info session, and we'll distribute that out to the students after the tour. Okay, so um, the advantage then, uh, is there something like this already out there that parents can do, or the advantage is you, you're the only one doing it right now? Well, we're creating this tour package. Um, again, the, the, if the parents wanted to go out and visit all the schools, they could make the arrangements, but we've done all the heavy lifting. So we'll have sure. the hotel arrangements, the food arrangements, the school uh, registration. Once they, they give us their information, we make sure that all the students are registered with the schools, so, and, um, and that, that way the school knows that the student has been there as well. So now being in the travel business uh, for so many years, um, you know, hotels and meals mean a lot to parents. You know, is it gonna be peanut butter and jelly or are they gonna get an actual meal where they can sit down and eat something? Uh, on a couple of the tours we do use box lunches, um, but not peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's not only box lunches yeah, on the tour. But uh, in general, um, our philosophy for all of our tours is that it's an experience. 
So it's, although the tour is obviously there to get the students to the schools and experience the schools, we want to try and make the entire experience worthwhile. So, I mean, like uh, on one of the tours, we have a pizza party planned for them. Huh. Um, on a, you know, another one of the tours, um, they'll be going to a uh, local uh, barbecue. Oh. Um, and like I was mentioning before, we're going to a restaurant that was featured on Diners, Drivers, and, um, and Dives. Dives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. So, so um, we try to create a, a experience for the kids. You know, um, could we have done, you know, less? Sure. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, when the kids are done, you know, they want to enjoy the experience and be able to talk about the colleges and also, you know, make it worthwhile. I mean, we pack a lot into a short amount of time. So, you know, once these tours are all completed, there's going to be a total of six tours and it'll be between 56 and 58 schools that are visited with the six tours. So when you realize how much is being packed in, you know, we want to give them some way to um, relax and enjoy the trip as well. Good. Well, we're coming to the end of our show, and I uh, usually ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents and the kids that are out there and they're thinking about taking college tours? What advice do you want to give them? Yeah. Advice, visit the school, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. It, pictures sometimes do it justice, but not always. You really, you won't know if the type of people you're going to be walking by, you know, I remember when I first stepped on campus, every single person was like, hey, you know, and like so friendly. And then there's some that you're just another tour passing, you know, <laughs> so definitely get the experience and um, do well in high school. Great. And then one of the things I told my kids is, you know, college is all about experience. It's about learning what you like and what you don't like so you can find your passion. And when you have a passion in life, it's just not work. It's it's enjoyable. Good. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks thank for, you having, for us. having us. Yeah. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.